Bonjour, this is Fabulously Delicious, the French food podcast. This is the podcast that's all about the cuisine that is said to have founded modern cooking. French ingredients and dishes, they've been the starting block for many of the world's best chefs and cooks. And on Fabulously Delicious, you'll learn all about those dishes and ingredients, as well as get to know more about fabulous French foodies. I'm your host, Andrew Pryor. Enchanté. Enchanté. My life changed when I competed on MasterChef Australia. And now, well, I'm living my best life right here in the French countryside. Cooking, eating, meeting wonderful locals, food producers, chefs, home cooks, drinking amazing wines, eating some of the over. Would you believe there's more than 1,500 French cheeses? Yum. Gonna try and eat them all for you. And I'm gonna share these fabulous experiences with you, my fabulously delicious audience. I hope you're enjoying them. Today, we are talking about a chef who was one of the first TV chefs in France. He also ran a three Michelin star restaurant that was famed around the world as one of the oldest restaurants in Paris. He's also the son and grandson of chefs and the father and grandfather of chefs as well. But besides all that, he's a brave man who joined the French resistance during World War II and saved many lives. Sit back, turn up the volume. If you're not driving, pour yourself a glass of wine, break a baguette, add a bit of some French cheese, maybe if you're lucky enough to have some, and enjoy today's episode of Fabulously Delicious, the French food podcast, the story of Romain Olivier. Guillaume Romain Olivier was born on Saturday, March the 27th in 1909 in the quaint town of Longon in the Aquitaine region of France, where I am in now. Nestled along the left bank of the Garonne River, Lagon sits in the heart of the Bordeaux wine region. Its picturesque vineyards and rich cultural heritage make it an ideal place for a budding chef to be born. At the time of Raymond's birth, Longon was a small town with a population of about 4,900 people. Today, it's grown modestly and it has now around 7,400 residents. The town's close connection to Bordeaux wines and French culinary traditions no doubt played a part in the shaping of young Raymond's love for the cuisine. Raymond was born into a family with cooking in its veins. His father, Louis, and his grandfather were both chefs. But it was his maternal grandmother who truly initiated him into the world of cooking as a young boy. Raymond would spend hours watching her prepare meals, learning the techniques and the flavours that would lay the foundation for his career. He was captivated by the way she transformed simple ingredients into delicious dishes, igniting a spark that would grow into a lifelong passion. Ramon's father, Louis, had his own illustrious culinary background. Originally from Mallorca, the largest island off of Spain's Mediterranean coast, Louis had moved to France and built a reputable career as a chef. His skills were such that he was once employed by none other than Auguste Escoffier, the legendary French chef and restaurateur at Savoy in London. Escoffier's influence on Louis would eventually trickle down to Raymond, instilling in him a sense of pride and discipline in the culinary arts. Later, Louis would become a starred chef in his own right at the Lyon Dior Hotel in Longong, a role that would further inspire Raymond. Now, I said Raymond there, and it's Romuald, which of course is the French way to pronounce Raymond, but my father's name was Raymond, hence the reason why I'm probably going to say a few times in this podcast, Raymond. I'm sorry, especially to all those French people for mispronunciation, mispronunciation, for not getting his right, for not saying his name correctly, if I happen to say Raymond instead of Romuald but please forgive me. At the age of 15, Ramon formally began his journey into the culinary world. He started as an apprentice under his father, learning the basics of cooking and working hard to develop skills. And after honing his abilities in his father's kitchen, he decided to broaden his training by enrolling in the prestigious Le Cordon Bleu cooking school in Paris. There he studied under Henri Paul Peprat, one of the founders of the original Le Cordon Bleu. Peprat was known for his rigorous approach to French cooking, and his mentorship helped solidify Ramon's dedication to his craft. Ramon's time at Le Cordon Bleu was transformative. 
He not only learned the technical, aspect, the technical aspects of cooking, but also developed an understanding of the artistry involved in creating exceptional dishes. This experience instilled in him a lifelong commitment to perfection, a trait that would later define his career. Following his training, he joined the Parisian restaurant Le Grand Chambord, where he learned about the brigades of the kitchen. This system, perfected by Oscoffier, organised the kitchen staff into specialised stations, each with a specific role, allowing a greater efficiency and discipline. This structure deeply influenced Romuald and confirmed his love for the profession. On Saturday, October the 31st in 1939, back in Langdon, Ramon married Susan Gislar. Their marriage marked a new chapter in Ramon's life, as he balanced his personal life with his burgeoning career. And in 1932, Suzanne gave birth to their first son, Michel. However, Ramon and Suzanne would eventually divorce, and Michel grew up in Langdon, raised by his grandparents after his parents separated. World War II presented new challenges for Raymond. Unable to fight due to health issues, he found himself managing a hotel in Bidouba, in the Var region of France. But Ramon's role during the war went on far beyond running a hotel. He became involved in the French resistance, organising a cell and using the hotel to shelter Allied airmen who had been shot down during the bombing missions. At one point, he harboured 11 American bomber crew members, risking his life to protect them until the liberation of France. For this courage and his contributions to the resistance, Ramon was later decorated by George Dwight Eisenhower, a recognition that he held dear for the rest of his life. After the war, Ramon's career took a monumental turn. In 1948, he purchased Le Grand Vifort, a historic restaurant located in Paris's Palais Royal. The restaurant was first opened in 1784 and had a storied history as one of Paris's earliest grand dining establishments. Originally called Café de Chartres, it was renamed Le Grand Féfort in 1820 and when Jean Féfort bought the restaurant. Over the years, it became a favourite amongst influential figures, including Henri de Balzac and Napoleon Bonaparte. The restaurant was also known for its culinary innovations, including the creation of the sauce Mornay, a creamy sauce that became a staple in French cuisine and seen, of course, on numerous menus around the world covered over lobsters. The restaurant was closed from 1905 until 1947, when in 1948, Raymond purchased it. Raymond took great pride in restoring Le Grand Vefort to its former glory. He carefully created the restaurant's ambience, paying attention to every detail, from the decor to the menu. Six years after acquiring the restaurant, Ramon's hard work was rewarded when the restaurant received three Michelin stars, an exceptional achievement. At the time, only a few restaurants in Paris held this prestigious rating, and it solidified Raymond's reputation as a master chef. Under his leadership, the restaurant attracted a star-studded clientele. It became a gathering place for the elite, with patrons such as Winston Churchill, André Malraux, Albert Gamas, George Simenon, Henry Ford, David Rockefeller, Jean Cocteau, who even designed the restaurant's menus, and Colette, the celebrated French author, not the Australian singer. Although I didn't ask Colette, the Australian singer, if she dined there. Maybe I should. If you're listening, Colette, Please let me know. I'm sure you're a lover of French food and have been to Paris, right? Hmm. You can ring my bell any time, Colette. Royalty also frequented Le Grand Fefort, with visitors like Agan Khan, Prince Rainier, and Princess Grace of Monaco. Ramon's influence extended beyond the kitchen as he turned Le Grand Fefort into a cultural institution that embodied the elegance and sophistication of French cuisine. Bonjour, bonsoir, fabulous listeners. If you're enjoying the delicious journey with us on Fabulously Delicious, the French Food Podcast, I've got a small favour to ask you that will make a huge difference to the podcast. 
please take a moment to rate and review the podcast wherever it is that you're tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening wherever you listen to podcasts. Especially if you're on Apple Podcasts, your five-star rating and fabulous review, of course, will help bring even more food lovers into our French culinary adventures. Merci beaucoup for your support and for being part of this amazing community, my fabulously delicious audience. Dreaming of cooking in the French countryside? Well, now you can make that dream a reality with my fabulous VN residencies. From May until October each year, I invite you to come and experience a delightful stay here with me in my French country home. Each residency includes accommodation, a warm welcome, a pero, and an all day cooking class with me here at home. And that's not all. Stay as long as you like if you want. They're between three and five day experiences, but if you want to stay a little bit longer, we can help to arrange that. Come join me for an unforgettable journey of flavours and friendship. For more details, visit andrewpryerfabulously.com. I can't wait to cook with you all. On December the 22nd, 1942, Romain married his second wife, Yvette Robert, in Rome. Yvette was only 20 at the time, and she'd spent her whole life in Rome before meeting Romain. Together they had three children, Dominique, Chantal and Sophie. Despite their marriage ending in divorce, Yvette and Ramon shared a deep connection through their children. Later in life, Ramon would marry his third wife, Marie Sunoa, with whom he would spend the rest of his life. In 1954, Ramon's career took an unexpected turn when he became the host of a television show, Arts and Magie de la Cuisine. This show was groundbreaking. It was France's first television program dedicated to cooking, and it allowed Ramon to bring French cuisine into the homes of viewers across the country. His co-host, Catherine Longier, added charm to the show, and together they captivated audiences for 13 years. Ramon quickly became known for his impressive culinary skills, particularly his ability to cut a chicken with remarkable speed. The camera would zoom in on his hands as he expertly carved the bird, a skill that left viewers in awe and mesmerised. One of the most iconic dishes Ramon prepared on the show was the Pigeon Prince Renier, a pigeon stuffed with bacon, liver, shallots, thyme, bay leaf and a blend of spices amongst other things. The pigeon was then sautéed in a pan with mushrooms and melted foie gras and truffles. Mm creating a luxurious meal fit for royalty. The dish, like many of Ramon's creations, showcased his ability to combine traditional French ingredients and with innovative techniques, earning him a very loyal following. Ramon's approach to the show was unique in that he wasn't afraid to introduce his audience to international flavours. Whilst his primary focus was on French cuisine, he occasionally featured recipes from other countries such as paella from Spain or moussaka from Greece, chicken pie from England, and even sukiyaki from Japan. When he prepared sukiyaki, he presented the dish to a Japanese woman on the show, speaking to her in English and inviting her to taste it. This openness to foreign cuisine was unusual for French chefs at the time as many were focused exclusively on French traditions. However, Ramon believed that understanding other cultures enriched his own culinary perspective, and he wanted to share this appreciation with his audience. With an Aussie twist, he described the cooking of fish thrown into the fire by Australian Aboriginals as an illustration of the oldest cooking techniques. He said that cooking is certainly an art, but like all real arts, it is evolutionary. Beyond his television career, Ramon was also a prolific author, sharing his expertise with readers around the world. His first book, Art and Magic of the Kitchen, was published in 1955 and became a classic in French culinary literature. He followed this up with La Cuisine pour les Hommes in 1958, Cuisine Orama numbered one with Catherine, his co-host on the show, in 1959. Cooking and the Cold in 1962, and Cuisine or Four Vente in 1963, Gastronomy Around the World in 1963 as well, 
The Kitchen of Happiness in 1964, Unusual Cuisine in 1969, Cooking Its Technique and Its Secrets in 1972, Cooking for My Friends in 1976, and The Great Cold Kitchen in 1978. After Roman passed, Adieu Fourneau was released. Each of his books reflected his deep knowledge of French cuisine and his passion for teaching others. In 1969, Romand travelled to Tokyo with the French Olympic team, where he showcased French cuisine to the international stage. This experience marked the beginning of his role as an ambassador for French culinary culture. Three years later, he represented France at the Montreal World's Fair, further solidifying his status as an international icon. Over the years, he appeared on television programs in Belgium, England, the United States, Canada, and even Mexico, spreading the art of French cooking across the globe. He was called an ambassador of French taste, an international star, and a globetrotter cook. In 1976, Romain was invited to participate in the Judgment of Paris, a now famous wine competition organised by an American, Patricia Gallagher, and Stephen Spirrell, an English wine merchant, to celebrate the United States Bicentennial. The blind tasting involved comparing French wines with those from California. And Romain, along with other French judges, was surprised by the high quality of the Californian wines. Of the wines he rated, only one French one shared his top three spots, underscoring the global rise of wine appreciation and setting the stage for a new era in wine culture. A surprise for many in France was that a Californian wine from the Napa Valley was voted by the French tasters as the number one wine. Tragedy struck on Friday the 23rd of December 1983 at 10.30pm. A bomb exploded, damaging Le Grand Vifor, injuring 12 people, including several Americans and two Japanese tourists. Ramon, deeply affected by this event, said, I am ruined. My clients trust me, and this has happened to me as I reach the age of 75. Unfortunately, no one claimed responsibility for the attack, and the police closed the case, and no one was apprehended for this bombing. The restaurant had to close and it remained shut until 1991. Ramon sold the restaurant to Jean Tattinger, who restored and reopened the restaurant. The restaurant went under the direction of Guy Martin, but Ramon's legacy within its walls remains. Sadly, on Monday the 5th of November in 1990 in Paris, Ramon passed away from cancer and was buried at Pierre Lachaise Cemetery. Ramon's third wife, Mari, passed away in 2019, and she is now buried with a beloved husband, Ramon. Ramon Olivier's influence lives on, as his techniques, his television presence, and his published works have inspired generations of chefs and food lovers alike. His vision of French cuisine, paired with a genuine curiosity about world flavors, has left a lasting impression on the culinary arts and French cuisine. Jean-Pierre Coff, a well-known French culinary figure, once said about Ramon, Ramon Olivier was a master of his art, a great chef, who knew how to elevate simple ingredients into culinary masterpieces. And Paul Bacuse, a legendary chef in his own right, said, Ramon Olivier was not just a chef, he was a pioneer who opened the door for many of us in the world of French cuisine. His co-host, Catherine, said, Ramon had a unique ability to connect with his audience. He brought French cooking into the homes of millions with his charm and his skill. And finally, his son, Michel Olivier, said, My father was a passionate chef who taught not just the technique of cooking, but also the love for the art of cuisine. Planning a trip to Paris, or maybe you're one of the lucky ones who get to live in Paris and call it home. I've had the joy of living in Paris and let's just say, pretty much eaten my way through Paris for you. 
That's why, with all this delicious experience, I knew that I had to share it with you. My fabulously delicious audience. Because, well, if you're here listening, you probably love French cuisine, probably coming to Paris, or living there, and want to taste what's good in cuisine in Paris. That's why I created my first book, Paris, a fabulous food guide to the world's most delicious city. In it, you'll find my top picks for the best boulangeries, cafes, chocolate shops, fromageries, patisseries, wine bars, so much more. Whether you're planning your trip or you're already wandering around Paris this year, this guide is packed with the most up-to-date recommendations to help you eat and explore like a local. Get your copy at andrewpriorfabulously.com. And yes, I offer a signed and gift package version for those that want to give it as a gift to somebody. You can also find it on Amazon and there's a Kindle version so you can get instant access. Bon voyage and happy eating your way through Paris through my book, Paris, a fabulous food guide to the world's most delicious city. Are you following along with me on Instagram? If you're not, you're missing out on a treasure trove of fabulous content about French food and life here in France. Join our fabulously delicious community and dive into the deeper flavours, stories and experiences that make French cuisine so special. Follow me now at Andrew Pryor Fabulously on Instagram and stay connected. Never miss out on a delicious update. Let's explore the culinary wonders of France together. That's it for another episode of Season 4 of Fabulously Delicious. Had you heard of Raymond Olivier before? What's the most fabulous thing that you learned from today's episode? Let me know by contacting me via Instagram. Slide into my DMs at Andrew Pryor Fabulously or you can email me on contact at andrewpryorfabulously.com. I'd love to chat with you all. We could just have a chat about French chefs if you like or French food. I love talking to people about food and especially French food. Thank you for listening. And remember, you know what my motto is. Whatever you do, do it fabulously. Merci beaucoup. Bon app. Oh, don't forget, buy the book, Paris, a fabulous food guide to the world's most delicious city. Available where? AndrewPryorFabulously.com or Amazon. <laughs>